All right, hello everyone. This is going to be a little bit of um, a little bit of a rant. Um, we're not going to be looking at uh, charts today. Um, I'm basically just going to be talking about all of the trading gurus and the trading systems that I tried um, before before finding ICT before really delving in and trying to understand ICT and I want to put the disclaimer out here that I'm not trying to disparage anyone but I'm also not trying to praise any of these people because frankly trying to apply their system just didn't work for me so I'm not praising them either I'm just trying not to disparage them too much I mean basically you know if it works for you fine didn't work for me I, I just don't think that these people have it um, you know, especially with a couple of these, a couple of these gurus, I, I really did try. Like I tried to follow what they were doing, and I'm just going to be frank, it didn't work. Um, they're missing something. They're missing a part of it. Uh, sometimes they get it right, but but you know, oftentimes they don't. And their systems just don't work. I, mean, I don't know what to say. Like you know, the standard disclaimer is always that. You know, well, if it works for you, if it works for you, blah, blah, blah. No, it, I mean, it either works or it does not work. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, there's really, like, that's it. You're either going to go, you're either going to make millions or you're going to go bust. Because your risk of ruin in trading is is huge. Um, especially with these highly leveraged markets. Whether you're looking at Forex, Futures, Crypto, doesn't matter. And just to be frank, like, going in, I've lost a lot of money trading. Um, this is what I want to do with my life. This is what I want to do all the time. I love the market and I want to understand it. I want to understand, um, you know, I can see that certain things are happening and I can see that money is being shuffled around and I'm add. So basically, I'm just going to rip on every single one of these things. Um, you know, I'm not going to try and disparage them too hard, but frankly, this is, I'm just going to vent. And um, before I get into it, I want to put out a couple disclaimers. So, number one, coming in with this frame, this is my emotional release. This is my catharsis. This is my opinion only. Um, So this is from my experience, and I've been trying to trade for a long time. You don't have to believe me. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to just, you know what? I am going to take back something that I said earlier. I am going to disparage these people. Um, and, yeah, I don't think their systems work. I think that they're just selling bullshit. It doesn't work. I don't care. I don't care if it's a young guy. Young hotshot. Some of these are younger, younger men that are YouTube hustlers, or if it's a guy like Al Brooks that's older, you know, he's got a different feel, feels more professional. His shit doesn't work either. Um, none of it works. So, you know, take it for what it is. So let's start with the first person I'm going to trash. You know, maybe this is not very mature of me, but basically, I, I need to get this out here. I mean, this is an emotional release, so it is what it is. I'm going to get it out. And, you know, it is what it is. Like, I've made up my mind that, you know, first off, praise be to God, but then praise be to ICT for putting the stuff out there. Like, whatever, we'll get into that later. So let's first start with Trader Sumo, Dope Trades, Wyckoff, Trend Trading, Bitcoin Trading Challenge, really any of the Bitcoin guys that follow anything Wyckoff. Sometimes the trend stuff works, but most of the time it doesn't. Um, it's not what's happening in the market. I, I studied, you know, here, here's the thing. I want to be very clear. Someone, some of you are going to watch this. Like, well, virtually it's going to get no views because why would it? But there might be one of you years in the future that watches this and thinks that I'm just not smart and I cannot just figure it out. But some of these things actually work. No, I'm pretty fucking smart. Um, I'm a licensed attorney. 
I've been through law school. I have three degrees. And when I want to put my mind to something, I'm pretty fucking smart. So, you know, uh, I have a lot of character flaws. Like, I'm impulsive. Um, I'm not always patient. I have a lot of flaws for trading, for sure. Absolutely. But when I want to really study something, I, I'm pretty fucking smart. And I've really put effort into these things, and I really tried to understand, and it really doesn't work. So, whatever. You can believe me or not. The Trader Sumo, the Dopes Trade stuff, I remember back I was watching, um, I used to watch Market Traders TV. Um, I think he's still on Twitch. Uh, but basically, he, I, I bought Dope Trade's course. Um, I got in there, followed it tried to watch it you know apparently these guys back in the 1920s Charles Dow and Gann and Wyckoff these fuckers figured it out these fuckers did not figure it out um, especially not in the electronic markets they, just didn't, they didn't figure it out I mean that they were living in the 1920s like I don't know what to say like Jesse Livermore I think he ended, died penniless um, I think he went bust twice um, so is that really from whom you want to learn I don't think so but yeah, Trader Sumo's bullshit doesn't work. I mean, it, it works sometimes. That's that's kind of what the problem is, is that sometimes you're going to get on a good trend and you'll be you'll be right, but you won't pick it at the right time. Not every trend actually works. And no like he doesn't put in the time element really. And so you're just with the that price element. And part of the algorithmic theory, like what's actually driving the markets, is times of the day, times of the week, times of the month, seasonal tendencies. And, you know, Dope can say that he covers that stuff. He doesn't. Not not to an extreme extent. Not to a precise extent. And, you know, he likes to say that, well, he was in the Army. He's, he, like, what kind of fucking authority does that give him in terms of trading? Like, if you were to say I'm a quantitative... I, you know, I come from quantitative finance. I have a degree in quantitative finance from MIT. That would be more authority from which to speak than I was in the army. I mean, what fucking authority does that give you? Uh, it gives you the authority of, you know, being a respectable man and having done something honorable, but it doesn't make you smarter. I mean, it doesn't make you a master in financial markets. That doesn't give you any authority from which to speak. I mean, those are two completely separate domains. So that that doesn't really, you know, he likes to flex that or he He's very proud of it, and I understand why he's proud of it. I, I, good for him. But, yeah, I mean, that doesn't give you any sort of... You could be the biggest asshole out there. You could be a motherfucker who, you know, you're a terrible person. You're a terrible human being, but you understand quantitative finance. you got to, like... And you've never done anything honorable in your life. You know, as long as... It would be more authority in this domain to say that you have a background in economics or in quantitative finance or you've just been trading for a very long time. I mean, being in the Army, like that doesn't matter. Not in this domain. So I tried Trader Sumo stuff, and I paid $950 for his course. I really studied it. I'm not an idiot. Like I tried to make it work. It doesn't work. You know, he came out with a hit piece on I ICT. I don't care if I, ICT says he's bipolar and he says that he's mentally imbalanced and, and like he outright says that he's got mental problems. Like he doesn't deny that. So I don't understand that angle of attack on him because he he's always led with that. So, you know, pointing out that ICT has gone on rants or he personally is, you know, a pretty mentally ill guy sometimes, like, yeah, I think we all know that. That doesn't mean that his that he's wrong. So I'll just say that, you know what, Trader Sumo's bullshit works for you, fine. I doubt it does because, you know, it probably doesn't work for you because I'm not an idiot and I tried to make it work and uh, it doesn't. So anything Dow Theory, we're going to move on to number two. I'm going to get out of dope trades. Like dope trades, you know, leans on the fact that he was in the Army or he was in Special Forces. That has nothing to do with this domain. It's an honorable profession, and I am proud of him for having done it, but that doesn't have any authority from which to speak in terms of financial markets. It just doesn't. And guys in the 1920s and 1930s were not trading in these electronically, algorithmically delivered markets. They just weren't. And Jesse Livermore went bust twice. And Charles Dow and Gann, they lived 90, 100 years ago. Back when the Dow was at like 3,000. The markets are not the same. The markets are not open cry, uh, 
markets. They're, they're just not. They're, you know, this is not the 1920s. Like, it's kind of nonsense to think that those markets 100 years ago, in some senses, in some seasonal tendencies and the basics of trend, yes, they do work the same. But the, per, the precision, the algorithmic delivery is different. We live in the electronic market age and things are delivered to the pip, to the, to the tick. They are delivered extremely precisely, especially on, a, on the most liquid market in the world. It's going to be on the futures, the ES market. They are delivered to the tick. They are delivered by high frequency trading algorithms and by, I would like to say, and I, you know, this is an ITC thing. I, I happen to believe it, that it's a price engine, that it's all baked in. It's a big price engine, some sort of quantitative um, supercomputer, something. Uh, I don't know, or maybe it's a collection of, of different scripts, macros, but it makes perfect sense. Um, the, you know, it's algorithmically delivered, whether it's a collection of algorithms or it's one big pricing engine. I don't really know what the truth is, but I, it's somehow delivered by algorithms. It's not delivered by human beings. You know, this is not the 1920s. So Trader Sumo, Dope Trades, I'm sorry, bullshit doesn't work. Skinner Mule's bullshit didn't work. I don't care if Skinner Mule... Um, traded for city group back in the day i know a good hedge fund trader and he trades um basically mean reversion um using like bollinger bands but he's a part of a hedge fund so it's part of a, a bigger strategy he's not trading singles like this is the thing that i think i got confused on is like you know guys that are working on a prop desk or a trade desk or a hedge fund they are given a system that they must follow because that's a, that's what part of the hedging group that they're part of. They're not trading singles. They're not trying to anticipate price. They just have a system that they're told this is you know follow this. So they're not anticipating price. They're they're just following whatever their algorithm that their particular part of the hedge fund tells them to do. They sometimes you know will go against it in terms of their discretion, but usually they just follow whatever their correlation is telling them they're not trading singles they're not trading directionally oftentimes so you can't just follow because oh this guy trades at a hedge fund therefore he's smart no 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 he's just given a template you know it doesn't mean he's figured out the market anyway so dope trades is full of shit jesse livermore charles dow they're all dead they all lived 100 years ago and doesn't work okay so let's go on to his name is thomas it's Thomas. But Thomas Bulkowski and classic chart patterns, candle patterns. I mean, the man outright says in his own books, I, I read chart patterns book to book. I know my bull flags and my rectangles and my head and shoulders very, very well. And let me just say that even he admits statistically that most of them don't work. I mean, most of them actually are no better than random chance, if not worse than random chance. So how the fuck you can actually trade algorithmically delivered electronic markets using classic chat chart patterns is, you know, actually when you put some thought to it, it's insane. Um, that's not how the price is actually delivered. Um, you know, maybe back in the 1970s, these things would have worked, but the chart classic chart patterns are bullshit. They're bullshit now. They don't, they don't actually work. That's not how the market is actually doing things. And it, it doesn't even make sense. Like, why would it? care whether you got a flag somewhere or not. It's not considering time. It's not considering the equities open. It's not considering overlapping of when the stock exchanges are, are, you know, when New York is open and London is open and then when London closes. It's not considering the market coming to a close and, and coming. It's not considering resettlement periods. It, it's not considering where resting liquidity is or where liquidity is being generated. It's just a freaking arbitrary line on the chart. So arbitrary support and resistance in a classic sense and arbitrary classic chart patterns. The only thing that they're actually good for is to figure out what retail, and, and by the way, retail includes like a lot of people with a lot of money. Let's put it that way. Um, you know that there are people, millionaires, I mean, big, big, big traders that are working off bullshit that doesn't work, like retail concepts. You know, by the way, I want to say anything. I'm going to add on number 10. Okay. So anyways, Thomas Bukowski, you know, if he actually made any money, probably made more money off his book sales. Whatever. Um, it's not how the markets work. Markets are not working off bull flags and bear flags. It's kind of stupid that I ever thought they did. Um, and 
candlestick patterns in and of themselves without a without an understanding of when they are happening and why what they are reaching for and where the resting orders are and where the liquidity is being generated um, are useless. So let's talk about the next guy I'm going to rip on, and that's Roger Banks and the 10 pip strategy. Personally, I think he's closer to a strategy that works. It still doesn't fully under, you know, it doesn't explain why the market is doing what it's doing, but, you know, generally, I think he's closer to having a, you know, a consistent strategy if you follow Raja. You know, he trades at London Open where there is initial volatility and he says go get 10 pips. I can never do that because it doesn't explain why the market is doing what it's doing. It explains it for one session and it gives you um, a decent trade setup. So I, I guess, you know, you could make Roger Banks work. So I'm not going to rip on him too much. But he doesn't, he's not really explaining why price is doing what it's doing when it's doing it. Anyways, so then the next guy I'm going to rip on, even though I like him, he seems like a nice guy. But anything trades by Matt, cumulative delta, volume profile, that shit doesn't work either. I mean, it, it does get closer. So let's talk about volume profile, market profile. So it hits on liquidity. So it hits on that aspect of it, but it doesn't hit on the time. And so you, you have one... The two parts of the equation, and they're on everyone's chart, and yet they seem to be ignored, is time and price. And so the volume profile, and just putting the volume on the right side of the chart, is a decent way at looking where past liquidity, high amounts of liquidity have been at price, but it's not telling you at time. And so you, you're missing half of the equation. You know. Um, so it gets you halfway there, and I think that you, you know, more often than not, it probably does. I mean, if you really just arbitrarily, you know, work with the volume profile, like I'm sure, you know, you could master it and and get and get somewhere there. But it never worked for me. Um. So, yeah, it never worked for me. I think trades by Matt is a nice guy, but I think he makes his money off YouTube. I don't think he actually makes money trading. I think he makes his money off of. Um, that's not true. He might make some of his income. He's probably positive trading, but it's probably not the the lion's share of his income. The lion's share of his income probably comes from YouTube and affiliate, basically affiliate marketing with Top Step. But you know, he might be a profitable trader, but I just think it's that's you know that's only part of his income equation. Why does that matter? Like, good for him for making an income. Everyone needs to make an income, but it you know it's not showing that the system like you can actually make the same amount of income or you can have the lion's share of your income come from trading without YouTube because that's basically that's it right is is he's making at least half if not more of his income off affiliate marketing and YouTube he's not making it off of trading the only reason that that matters is because it means that that you just trying to follow what he's saying trading you probably cannot fully make your income off of just trading, just following what he's doing. Because again, the problem with volume profile is that it's missing the time element. It's just showing you volume in relation to price. And so it's just on the Y axis. It's not on the X axis. And you must have both. You must have both. Whether it's the time of the day or the week of the month or the month of the year or the quarter of the year, Time matters, and op, you know now it's so clear to me that obviously that's actually what's happening, right? It's the two sides of your chart. It's the two damn ax It's the two axes on the chart, of course. But anyways, volume profile, cumulative delta. It, sometimes it's going to give you a signal, but it's not showing you the full picture. It's just showing you price without relation to time. So, anyways, trades by Matt stuff doesn't work for me either. I've tried looking at Axia Future stuff, Jigsaw, Dom trading. The Dom is fake, y'all. Like, let's just let's just outright say what it is. Is the Dom is fake? Uh, it, spoofing is illegal. There's still fuck tons of spoofing. I mean, what are they? You know, they get fined sometimes. Whatever. They make five thousand bazillion times whatever they get fined. You know, they just enter into a consent decree. Uh, with the SEC, they never actually get prosecuted. I mean, I think I think there's been one spoofing case in 20 years. I mean, they pull their orders, y'all. The orders are fake, and even if they're not fake and they get filled, you know, you don't know what does that well, what does that mean. So if you see a huge block of orders, you know, it could be as trades by Matt would say, and this is sometimes true. You know, sometimes it's true if it's the right time. 
um, sometimes those big orders on the DOM are going to be magnets to price, but sometimes they're not. And it's, you don't know. Like, if you were just following that, you don't know. So the DOM is, number one, the orders are getting pulled and, and refilled all the time, and they and the big money enters in on iceberg orders. They they enter in as counterparties to stops. Like, you don't, they, they're not going to leave a, you know, Sometimes it works, sometimes, but you don't, you know, it's not consistent. Like the big orders, it, they could be a magnet, they could repel price, you don't know. I mean, you don't know. It's just a big order that's just sitting there. Anyways, yes, it's, Trades by Matt is right. Sometimes a big order on the DOM is a market, but sometimes it's just fake and it's just going to be pulled. And you don't know. Okay, so that's it with DOM trading. The ladders, yeah, the ladders don't work. I mean, maybe you could scalp a living trading the ladders if you got really good with it and you were trained professionally but it's not telling you why price is doing what it's doing anyways it doesn't work for me um because it, it misses the time element that that's the big problem with it is that it's price but it's without time so the next thing is anything elliott wave or harmonic patterns or fibonacci for fibonacci's sake like yeah fibonacci retracements again sometimes work but it has to be at the right time <laughs> and so again it's one of those things that you're just looking at price without relation to time so sometimes i would say more often than not like playing re playing a retracement in and of itself is probably a good idea and i would say you know just randomly playing retracements over time you'd probably be profitable but it's not showing you why the market is doing what it's doing it's not giving you that understanding because it doesn't have anything to do with time. So the Fibonacci retracements in and of themselves are telling you something about price, but they're not telling you anything about time. And Elliott Wave is bullshit. Harmonic patterns are bullshit. And that guy Vinny E. Mini and ever you know, whatever. They're all they're all I mean, it's just bullshit. Bullshit, like so. Um, the the number nine is anything that's fundamental. I've tried that. And by the way, all of these things I have tried, like all of these gurus and all of these systems I have tried, and I've lost a lot of money trying them. So, and I'm not a stupid person. So for whatever it matters to you, just know that I, I have tried. You're probably just going to say that I'm a hater and I don't know what I'm talking about and blah, 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 blah. And you're going to go and try all these gurus yourself and you're probably going to have the same exact result that I did. So good luck to you. I don't care. Um, I'm not trying to brag. I just want to make an income from trading. That's it. That's all I want to do is make an income from trading, feed myself. That's it. And glory to God. Thanks to ICT. ICT says don't praise him, praise God. So all right, praise God. Whatever. Praise God for bringing the, bringing the truth of what's happening in the marketplace. But you're probably going to think that I'm a nutter, and that's fine. Um, anything fundamental or trying to follow the news. Guys, the news is bullshit. If the news mattered at all, the market, the S&P 500 would be at like 3,000. I mean, it would be half of what it is. Guys, we had three major banks, not small banks. Like, okay, yeah, it wasn't J.P. Morgan Chase failing, but it would, like, decent-sized banks. Three of them just failed. They got bailed out by the FDIC, like, in rapid fire. We have trillions of dollars in treasuries that are underwater. What does that mean? That means that the interest rate on most existing treasuries is now lower than newly pinned treasuries because the interest rate, the Fed funds rate is going up. So those treasuries that are currently on the secondary market, most of them are what? They are underwater. They are worth less than they were before. And what does that mean for most of your bank's balance sheets? They're turning to shit. They are turning to shit because the treasuries that they own, that they bought at a lower interest rate, are now underwater. And you see... Guys, guys, everything is connected. If, if, if the stock market, if the stock market had anything to do with the real economy, it would already be in the gutter, like already be in the gutter. It would already be gone. But that's not really what the stock market does. The stock market is, a sh is injections of liquidity by new retail and new funds constantly. So new money is always coming into the stock market. I'm saying the stock market just also the futures market. We're just going to say the stock market, though. New money is always coming in. It's being shuffled around. It's a game. That's it. It has nothing to do with the fundamentals. Guys, nothing. 
Nothing. You got to get it out of your head that fundamentals have anything to do with what's driving the stock market. P.E. ratios are insane. We had three major banks fail. We got trillions of dollars worth of treasuries underwater. We have we have a, an economy that's still running hot, even though the Fed is raising interest rates. So what do we see? Like the Fed's probably going to keep raising interest rates. Is it's all fake? You can't follow the news. The only thing you can do with the news is you look at your economic calendar. It's going to tell you basically when there's going to be volatility, when you might have a big move. But it's not going to tell you in which direction to trade. It's not going to be a signal. It's basically just going to tell you, like, you look at your economic calendar. This is when there's going to be an injection of volatility. This is when they're going to reprice the stock market wherever they want it to go. They already wanted to take the stock market. Guys, because it's a rigged game. It's a rigged game. It's already baked into the cards. I don't know by whom exactly, and I don't know by what, but I know that it is. So nothing fundamental drives the stock market. Nothing. Nothing. It's fake. It's all fake. It's just a shuffling of money. It's just a cannibalization of, um, of liquidity. It's just a poker game. That's it. I'm not saying it's good, bad. It's amoral. It just is what it is. Your objective is not to fight the fact that it's a rigged game. It's just to get on board with it and just be glad that they let you play it if you figure it out. Anyways, last, so yeah, don't follow the news. Follow the news so that you know, like non-farm payrolls, FOMC, you know when they are happening, so you're expecting an increase in volatility. It is not a signal to go long or short. It is not. I hope that makes sense. The news is bullshit. It's only a sign for volatility. That's it. It's not a signal to go long or short. It's not. The market is fake. I mean, it's not fake. It's, it's rigged. It's, it is fake. It's just a shuffling of liquidity. That's it. That's all it is. The news is a smokescreen to take price where they already wanted to take price. Number 10, indicators are bullshit. And why are indicators bullshit? Indicators are just telling you what already happened. And so, like, everything that's all retail, it's all designed to make you fail, guys. I really believe that now. Like, YouTube gurus are designed to make you fail. Retail products especially like your old man stuff like MACD guys that's what like 60 year old men use like it's old man stuff and it's bullshit um, moving averages they're just the historical price averages guys that's not a prediction that's bullshit and the VWAP okay let's talk about the VWAP does the VWAP work the VWAP might sometimes work because there there has been an interest in that price but if it's not at the right time it's not going to go to VWAP guys Everything that all of the indicators are just price based and they're not telling you time. They're not telling you time. That's the problem with all those indicators. If they're not paired with time, they're only telling you half the story. And so anything that has to do with indicators is bullshit. You have to know the time of the day where things are likely to happen, where you're going to get your pickup of volatility. When is that? Frankfurt Open, London Open, London AM session, 0830 News and Burger Lift. 11.30, uh, London close, 09.30, equities open, 12 to 1, it's going to be your New York lunch, uh, 1.30 maybe, uh, New York PM session open, and uh, 3.15 to 3.45, which is your market market on close. That's when you expect things to happen, and it's delivered in those time frames all the time, every day. When, the, when stock exchanges open, during lunch and when stock exchanges close. I mean, guys, that's when stuff happens. That's when you expect something to happen. Stock exchange opens, stock exchange closes. I mean, that's basically it. And then the news embargo lift and lunch. Okay, so like seven time periods in a day is when you expect things to happen. Frankfurt, Tokyo, London, New York, New York lunch, New York PM session, London close, and uh, and market on close. That's when you expect things to happen, guys. Period. And then when you look at your times of the year, you have seasonal tendencies. Those are your macro trends. And sometimes they're going to go against the seasonal tendency. But but you're you're closer to what the market is actually doing because you're factoring in both things. You're factoring in price and time. Price is useless without time, and time is useless without price. And so everything, all of your indicators that have that are only showing you something in relation to price are only showing you half the story. That's 
the problem with all of these all of these gurus is they're showing you half the story. The volume profiles, half the story. Dope trades, Trader Sumo, Wyckoff, all that bullshit. It's half the story. It's not showing you time. Classic chart patterns. It's half the story. Okay, Roger Banks is closer because he's on he's on a particular trading session, which is London, so he's closer. Indicators, historical. It's just showing you historical price without relation to time. That's that's the problem. And if you think like, let me just say this: anything to do with breakout trading is complete garbage, guys. You really think that big money is trading breakouts? Maybe once in a blue moon, if it's like a perfect setup, you just market smash it in. Fine, guys. No, obviously, if you're managing billions of dollars. And that's the kind of money that we're talking about in the in the Standard and Poor's 500 stock market and the ES futures. I mean, we're talking about billions of dollars. If you're managing a multi-million dollar fund, are you really going to fucking enter in on a market smash? Generally speaking, no. Maybe once in a blue moon, you'll fat finger something. But if you are really uh, a bank trader, if you're really you know dealing with what's like actually driving price, you're going to try and enter in on a limit or a pending order in places where it, where there are willing participants to buy at a high price or sell at a low price. This is obvious, guys. I mean, when you actually put some thought to it, obviously that's what's actually happening. But it has to happen at the right time. So VWAP. Is VWAP important? If it's at the right time, guys. But if it's not at the right time, no. No. So I wouldn't use any indicators. They don't work. They're not showing you the second half. So these are all the gurus that I could just think off the top of my head that I've tried... And it's all bullshit. So, you know, ICT might be um, might be crazy. He said he's bipolar. Whatever. I don't care anything about the man. What I care about is that it seems to work. It seems to be a lot closer to what's actually happening than any of these guys. And um, that's why I'm going to stick with ICT, guys. Not because he's a perfect man or not because he's even a likable man. Whatever. He seems a little bit nuts. But actually, someone who's really figured out what the market is doing, to me, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, I would expect that man not to be perfectly stable. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, he's exactly the kind of personality that I would expect would be compulsive and obsessive enough to actually figure it out. So, yeah. Every, basically, I, you know, just submit to, I just submit to, you know, um, ICT is where I'm going with it, and that's it, because it is the truth. It's what's actually driving the marketplace is time and price, time and price. Of course that's what's actually driving the marketplace. When you actually think about it, of course it is. Not fucking animal patterns and, and the DOM and cumulative delta and volume profile. Of course those things aren't actually driving the market. It's time and it's price, and it's time and it's price. That's it. And if you listen to any of these fuckers, you're going to lose money, probably. I can't say that for sure. Maybe you'll make money. Probably, if you'll be like me, don't be a breakout guys. Don't be a fucking breakout artist. Breakout breakout trading does not work. You know, you can follow the volume profile and the cumulative delta. Sometimes it's going to work. Oftentimes it's not. That's it, guys. So, for what it's worth, I don't think ICT is a perfect man. He said not to praise him. He said praise God. So instead of praising him, I praise God. And I'm going to keep working. I'm going to get through the whole ICT library. I've been through the 2022 mentorship. I've watched the 2023 mentorship. And, yeah, he rambles. He rambles and he goes on. And sometimes, like, he goes on and on and on, whatever. I, I don't care. I don't care. Um, he's he's telling you, you know, as close as I, I, I guess he can come to what is actually driving the market and why it is actually doing what it's doing. And all these other fuckers aren't, aren't really telling you that. So, for all of his faults, he's the one that I've chosen to follow. And for the rest of my trading career, for the rest of my life, this is it. This is, this is what I'm doing. So, that is it. That's my whole rant. I'm done. Um, Y'all know where I stand on the issue now. And um, we'll talk to you later.